Hey, look, we're here at the Havoc. It's the one-year anniversary. Well, it's almost a one-year anniversary, but just sell tomorrow. But they're celebrating early. They're celebrating on Sunday. So what's it been like to be here for a year? Uh, busy. Very busy. busy, but really fun. It's been a labor of love for sure, and uh, we're still at it, hoping to keep going for a long time. <laughs> what's put the biggest smile on your face about this whole past year? Um, honestly, just having... Uh, everyone come out and the community really welcoming us we've had someone call us the front porch of pittsburgh and that we were just like that's that's amazing that's so exactly you're what the we front want porch be. of pittsburgh yeah. and you're allowed to bring your dogs out to the front porch of pittsburgh of course. and of course. you got food trucks out here today Absolutely. Yep. all right so how many people really have when they when you go visit somebody on their front porch do you have a food truck sitting out right out there <laughs> I mean, if it's a good southern porch, they'll at least invite you in for some food, you know? <laughs> That's it. All right. And how many different brews do you have to offer out here? We've had a dozen beers on tap. Okay. And then we also have cider and mead and wine for those who, I, I know you can't believe this, some people don't prefer beer. So we have other alternatives on, on tap for them. Yeah, well, that, that's my wife because Holly here took care of her when we had the, the event out here. So yes. you got to reach out to Holly. We had a great time out here. Oh, my gosh. I love those sunglasses. Look, he's, he's undercover. No one can tell who he is. Look, I was talking to everybody here about the one-year anniversary. The question was, and we got your answer, but you didn't give me your answer yet. What's the thing that put the biggest smile on your face this past year? I love telling our story. And then we have people come back again and again. Anytime you're here, you'll see all generations. So all I love that. Yeah, I noticed that, there's one, like a little yeah, generation yeah. running over there. I love that idea of extending our front porch and everybody's welcome. It's been amazing. All right, what's, put, what's Michael, what's put the biggest smile on your face? Uh, honestly, so people coming back and drinking. No, lie to me. <laughs> no, 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 no. People yeah, coming back. And, listen, the, I make beer to make people happy, and when people come back and keep drinking my beer, that makes me very happy. And right, wh which of your best, brew, which of your brews has been the best seller this year? No kidding. Uh, Havoc Actual, uh, the Mexican style lager, is uh, two to one uh, the crowd favorite. They they drink twice as much of that as anything else. Uh, followed very closely by our award winning. Uh, we have a hazy IPA. Uh, it's called the Thousand Haze to Die. And uh, we, we were open four months last year, and we won a bronze medal at the North Carolina Brewers Cup on that, uh, on that beer. And uh, so people have been drinking the hell out of that and drinking uh, the, the Mexican lager. And fun, funny enough, uh, a week from now, uh, you'll be able to, or actually more like two weeks from now, you'll be able to find it in some local grocery stores, Lowe's, Harris Teeter. Um, Just total, up the road. Total beverage. No, all over the triangle. Oh, all over the yep. triangle. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to be uh, canning those two, uh, those two um, specific beers. So the Havoc Actual uh, Mexican lager and the... Uh, a thousand haze to die hazy IPA. But you're also brewing stuff that's available at Doherty's, aren't you? We are. So uh, Doherty's has an exclusive with us. They um, we do an Irish red ale called Limerick, and uh, it's only you can only get it at Havoc and at Doherty's. Uh, any of the Doherty's locations around the Triangle and uh, here at Havoc as well. All right. We were talking. Well, she's gone now. Oh, there we are. I'm running away. We were talking about this being the front porch of Pittsburgh. Somebody, that was maybe one of the finest reviews we've had all year was somebody said, Havoc is Pittsburgh's front porch, and I, that warmed my heart. Well, that's the thing. You can drive by all the time and you see something out of it. Yeah. But you're not just a brewery. You're also a music entertainment center, and after you folks don't sell food directly, nope. people can get food. So what are, the, what are the options here? Let's talk about music. Yeah. You bring something out every weekend. So basically. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoons, there's always live music. Um, there's always food to be delivered here, so we uh, we have really great relationships with the mod next door, Doherty's, uh, Marcel's Pizza up the street. Um, trying to think of and who else and others. Um, the West End. Uh, we have um, uh, you know other restaurants here in the area. But if uh, when you come into the tap room, you can uh, scan one of the one of the QR codes that's here on the on the table and find all of the food options as well as our uh, food truck schedule. So we have a rotation of, I don't know, 20, 20 or more food trucks that come in and out of uh, Havoc, and they're here every day-ish, uh, so there's an occasional day where, where someone has a, a you know, a, a generator hiccup. trouble or a hiccup or something, and they're not out here, but we generally have food options every day. And today, for your one-year celebration, you're having four trucks. Is it four? Yeah, four trucks. Four, four truck rodeo here. We've got Cousin's Lobster yep. all day. 
bomb ass sandwiches all day. Tacos Parezo, my favorite tacos in the area, all day. And what's your What's your favorite taco? taco? They have a pork pastor taco with a little bit of pineapple. It, it's not always on the menu, but you can ask for it. My absolute favorite. Oh, is, is it on the secret menu? It's on the secret menu. Oh, okay. Secret, yeah. And they have their their California burritos uh, to die for. It is it, honestly one of the best best Mexican food offerings in Pittsburgh at all. Is Tacos Parezo. Have you eaten uh, each one of the food trucks? Yes. Wow, look at that, and he still keeps his, <laughs> he still keeps his girly shape. Yeah, you should see how hard he works in the brewery. He works it off. I know, I know, I know. We, what, oh my gosh, and you even got casks, man. We do. Cash. So that is, uh, that's the remainder of our pumpkin ale from last October, and it's in uh, Pinhook bourbon barrels. So we're, um, we're bourbon aging that. Uh, it'll be released, uh, kind of limited release here this October. So we're going to uh, open that up. Uh, All right. Being a novice, here. never he hearing about bourbon aging beer. Oh, what okay. exactly does that mean? It's exact. So uh, with bourbon, you can only use a bourbon barrel once for bourbon. Uh, so they, they sell them. They get rid of them. Uh, we picked up a handful of uh, first time, you know, wet, wet barrels. So they, they were freshly emptied at the, uh, the distillery. Uh, we got them and we filled them with beer. And so what happens with the beer is it absorbs some of that uh, alcohol flavor, that bourbon, you know, that caramel, the vanilla, you know, that kind of stuff out of the out of the uh, the wood and the beer. Um, and then over time, actually, the the, the beer uh, tends to um, it doesn't evaporate so much as it just sort of condenses in there, and you get you get a, a stronger, uh, mellower. I, it just it's a uh, aging. It takes the beer to a whole other place. So it's it, it's going to be a totally different beer by the time it comes out. We've been tasting it on occasion just to see where it is. Yeah. I'm I'm just for control, control purposes. Uh, and I can tell you that uh, right now it is like the finest pumpkin bourbon pumpkin pie you've ever had at uh, thanksgiving so holy cow now wait a minute so right now once you're done with that actually even at this point it tastes different than you originally brewed it back sure. in october is that yeah, right you can still tell it's a pumpkin ale uh it's it's got similar kind of flavor profile to it but the the little addition of bourbon and some of that vanilla you get in there it's really changing it um it's a better beer so when are you going to be ready to release that uh, that'll be october november we've been around thanksgiving probably oh, okay so you yeah. so it's going to be Will you have pumpkin ale beer again? Yes. You're just going to have regular, and then you're going to have yeah. the bourbon limited it, edition. Yes. All right. Now, what do you do with the the, the casks after you're done with them? Are you going to have barrel racing? Ha <laughs> uh, Excellent question. So uh, one of the ideas uh, that I'm currently working on is... Um, so I know a guy who takes old bourbon barrels and turns them into wood pellets for your uh, smoker. Okay. So that's the that's the idea is we're going to just chunk those things up and make them into uh, burnable pellets for your, uh, you know, so you can smoke your pork butt at home on your uh, your, your, your bourbon and uh, pumpkin ale. Uh, well, maybe we pellets. can, we can, actually, I talked to Greg, maybe we can do a, uh, what's it, People's Choice uh, smoking event out here. That would be fun. Uh, that would be, sure. that would be perfect. Now, yeah. you mentioned with bourbon, you can only use the barrel one time. Is that the same thing with the beer? Uh, you can use the, so bourbon specifically, I think it's by law, you can only use the barrel once or else okay. you can't call it bourbon. Um, with beer, we can do it as many times as we want, but the problem is you get diminishing returns. So you won't extract as much flavor out of the barrel uh, in successive uses of it. So I'm only going to use them once. All right. So if this is successful coming in this coming October, you go ahead and get a whole new batch of barrels. Is that right? That's it. Now, is there any other beer besides pumpkin beer that you could do this with? Uh, yeah, you can do it with almost any beer um, if you're if you're brave enough. Um, it is. Uh, Come on, Mike. We know <laughs> Michael's brave enough. Yeah, there's. Uh, so I have uh, I have a porter right now that that uh, is going into barrels soon. Um, uh, it's popular to do darker, uh, heavier beers uh, into a bourbon barrel, mostly because it gives a um, you know the the weight of the beer, the gravity of it, the the, the alcohol content of it gives kind of a better balance to the aging process. Uh, so typically I'll do it with uh, with heavier style beers, but yeah, so quarters next, uh, we'll probably put some uh, stout in a, bur a bourbon barrel at some point, uh, maybe a barley wine. Um, some people, I've seen, uh, recently I had a, um, a Saison, that, which is a, a, a Belgian French, uh, it's kind of a farmhouse ale, it's got a little bit of funkiness to it. I had one that was barrel aged in bourbon and I thought it was really delicious. So maybe one of those is coming along the way. So when's your next contest? You said you want you yeah. won a, an award uh, at the end of last year. When, yep. When's the next big contest coming up? Uh, so the North Carolina Brewers Guild is a, a we're really a tight group of uh, brewers. So there are 420 breweries in North Carolina and uh, most of us are part of the Brewers Guild and we uh, we know each other, we get along, we uh, 
uh, we compete friendly, uh, you know, in that that way. And so the the next uh, Brewers uh, North Carolina Brewers Cup is in uh, I want to say August. August. Yep. All right. You mentioned that you have a brew that comes up over at Gordy's and it's only sold exclusively by you two. Right. Uh, how did that relationship come about? Where you've made that arrangement to brew? Do they come yeah. to you? Do you go to them, or we just sitting around having a beer and said, hey? You know what? Let's do this. It was uh, really very organic. We, uh, when when we heard that Bur uh, Doherty's was going in uh, a couple of doors down here as part of the SoCo um, uh, development, we uh, we got together with them and wanted to just form a relationship and get to know them as our, as our neighbors. And uh, as we as we talked, um, I mentioned to them, hey, you know, we uh, we do a, a an Irish red, and they're like, hey, that sounds delicious. So. We brewed up a sample of it for them and uh, took it over, and, and they thought it was so delicious they wanted to put it on tap. And we said, "Great, let's let's make that yours." So now, do they have to do they have to pour your beer the same way they have to pour a Guinness? That, not that beer, no. So a Guinness is a nitro beer. It's uh, instead of uh, carbonated, it's served on nitrogen. Um, and we have a beer like that here. That is, uh, it's it's actually a blonde ale that is served on nitrogen. Uh, but uh, an Irish red ale, you serve it like just any other beer. All right. Yeah. Anything else folks need to know about the celebration? It's going on all day, but all, all day, day means from what? Now till nine, so right? So we close at 10 every day. Okay. Uh, so they're welcome to come out anytime between now and 10. We have uh, Jordan Pickett. We've got uh, Bucket Jam Band today. We've got other uh, other performers. Um, it's just going to be a great neighborhood party. We're going to be here. Um, we got tons of food trucks and uh, just a, a great atmosphere. So come out to Pittsburgh's front porch. You got to check them out, folks. They've been here for a year and they're celebrating today on Sunday. Michael, thank you very much. Thanks, Jake.